uh, ranking members recognized for five minutes. Great. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Dunham, following subpoenas you've received from the Judiciary Committee Republicans, didn't you offer to meet and confer with Judiciary Republicans on multiple occasions? I think my staff has had uh, several uh, offers to meet and several conversations with staff. And today you are appearing voluntarily to this hearing? Correct. And this is the second time appearing voluntarily before this hearing, is that this committee, is that right? That's correct. Has the FBI provided committee Republicans with over 1,700 pages of documents? It's actually over 2,500 pages. And the FBI has also offered to work with committee Republicans to prioritize their document requests, is that right? That's correct. This included offering in-person review of non-public documents, is that right? That's correct. Have you seen on social media the doxing of what you would call non-SES, which is like senior level employees, uh, the, the names of FBI agents and, and DOJ employees, not by my Republican colleagues, but by uh, just folks on social media who have doxed and put out their public information? I have, and this goes to uh, uh, one of the areas where we're a little bit more considerate about where we can provide information. We are bound by Department of Justice and Executive Branch policies, uh, which I mentioned previously. Some of those policies relate to non-SES employees. Uh, they feel that executives are best suited to uh, answer questions and, and answer for decisions that are made under their command. But it's not just about those policies, it's also about the safety of our employees. Uh, we've had employees that have been named by congressional committees that have come before congressional committees that have experienced uh, harassment and threats uh, this Congress. It's not lost on me that uh, a couple of weeks ago, a man in Tennessee was arrested or pled guilty to conspiracy to kill FBI employees who are working on a January 6th case. We're in a heightened threat environment. And just last week, the, the website you're referring to, uh, which had uh, non-public information about our interactions with the committee, uh, promotes doxing. It's got pictures of FBI employees. It's got uh, their dates of birth, their addresses, their spouse names. It's ridiculous. It's unacceptable. Uh, so when I say we're protecting these employees, it's not some effort to hide the ball. It's to protect them for their safety and protect them from these threats and harassment that they've experienced this year. Thank you, Mr. Dunham. Ms. Bumpus, uh, welcome. You're also appearing voluntarily today, is that right? That's right. And this is your, you're a 17 year career FTC employee and, and you've served under four Republican chairs and four Democratic chairs, is that right? That's right. And the Judiciary Committee only has jurisdiction over your antitrust work, is that right? Correct. And Ms. Durakalu, welcome back. Uh, you have testified uh, before and you were unanimously confirmed by the United States Senate, is that right? That's right. And you were also voluntarily appearing? Yes. And second time? Yes. For this committee? And did I hear right that the State Department has provided more than 1,600 total pages responding to the House's investigation? It's actually 1,900. Okay. So just like the FBI's, it's going up uh, yes. as we speak. And you have also offered numerous times uh, and through meetings, briefings, and correspondence to Judiciary Committee Republicans uh, to meet with them and confer about the documents they want. Is that right? Yes, and we've also provided opportunities to meet with the Global Engagement Center itself. What is the purpose of the Global Engagement Center? The purpose of the Global Engagement Center is to identify, analyze, and expose foreign disinformation and propaganda. Why is that a problem for us? Uh, it, it is a major problem uh, because a lot of that foreign disinformation and propaganda often targets the United States. Does it draw a distinction between the Republican Party or the Democratic Party when it presents itself? While I'm not an expert in disinformation, um, from my personal experience, I can tell you that they do not discriminate between parties. Great, thank you. I yield back. 